girls, my name's Nova, and I'm really excited for you to go on a space adventure with me and my friend Kayla. Over the next few weeks, we're going to discover what's in the sky, just like space scientists. We're going to learn about the sun, the moon, and even the stars. Are you ready, girls? Hi everyone, thanks for joining me today. My name is Kayla Roloffs and I am the Youth Outreach Manager at Girl Scouts of Minnesota and Wisconsin Lakes and Pines. And I just wanted to say thank you so much for joining us today. Um, today we are going to be talking about outer space. But before we get started, I would love to start with the Girl Scout Promise and Law. So if I could have everybody raise their right hand with their three fingers in the air and repeat after me. On my honor, I will try to serve God in my country, to help people at all times, and to live by the Girl Scout law. I will do my best to be honest and fair, friendly and helpful, considerate and caring, courageous and strong, responsible for what I say and do, and to respect myself and others, respect authority, Use resources wisely, make the world a better place, and be a sister to every Girl Scout. Okay, daisies. So for the next few weeks, we are going to be learning about outer space and work to become space explorers. For today's activity, we will be making a sky book. So for this activity, you are going to need at least two sheets of paper, um, a stapler or you could use a hole punch and ribbon, whichever you prefer. We're just going to be using it to bind our books. Um, and then you're going to just need whatever you like to decorate. Um, I use color pencils for mine, but if you have markers or crayons or paint, um, you could use stickers, whatever you like. Um, we're going to use those to decorate the cover. So before we start decorating, we are going to talk about the sunrise and the sunset. Has anyone ever heard those words before? So we use sunrise to describe the sun coming up in the mornings and sunset would be when the sun goes down at night. And the reason we have a sunrise and a sunset is because the earth is spinning in circles. Um, so why don't we take just a second to try spinning around in circles? Are you ready girls? Oh boy, I sure got dizzy. Okay, just like you are spinning, the Earth does a complete spin every day, and that's what makes it look like the sun is moving across the sky. So when our side of the Earth is facing the sun, it's daytime. And when our side of the Earth is facing away from the sun, what do you think that's called? Nighttime, that's right. Um, do you think that different places on Earth have nighttime while we're having daytime? Or do you think it's just daytime for everyone at the same time or and nighttime for everyone at the same time? That's a great question, Kayla. What do you think, girls? So next, we are going to look at the sky and draw just what we see, exactly like a scientist does. So we'll start by making our sky book. What you're going to need is two sheets of paper, or you can do more if you like. I did two for mine, um, and I like to fold mine in half. Uh, hamburger bun style just to make it look a little bit more like a book. If you want to make bigger pages you can definitely keep your pages open as well. Um, but I like to fold mine. This is how I made my sky book. I decided to use colored pencils to color it and I decided to bind mine with staples just because that's what I had access to at my house. When I designed the cover I decided to use the sun with just a couple birds in the sky because it reminds me of summer, which is my favorite season. And let's take a little while to just uh, decorate the cover. Um, you can decorate it however you want. Um, feel free to be creative. It's your book and we want it to represent something special about you. While you girls decorate your sky books, I'm going to tell you a story about the sun. 
There was once a forest where all the animals played happily and contentedly together, so much so that the sun noticed them and wanted to join in. The animals told the sun he could play with them, but when the sun left his place in the sky and came down to the forest, none of the animals could stand the heat, and they all went running to hide. The sun went back up into the clouds, feeling terribly sad. So sad that no longer did he want to come out every day and light up the world. Without the sun, life was beginning to run down, the lovely forest and its animals included. Knowing what the problem was, the animals had a meeting to think of ways to cheer the sun up. Someone suggested that they play with the sun at night when he no longer shone. That would avoid the heat of his rays. So that's what they did. All the animals had to make a great effort to rest during the day so that they could play at night. But they so wanted to cheer up the sun that all the animals managed it. Soon the sun, and with it happiness, returned to the forest and the rest of the world. Wasn't that a great story? It's always nice when we can do things to make others feel better. I hope you're doing well with your sky book. If you need more time decorating, feel free to pause and then start the video up again when you're ready to go. All right, did everyone finish decorating? And once you're done, go with an adult outside if the weather will let you, and we are gonna draw what we see. If the weather's kind of gross or it's raining or too cold, you can use any window in your house to look outside too. That's totally fine. Just one important note, never look directly at the sun. That could really hurt your eyes. Once you're outside, make note of what you see. Are there any clouds? If so, what shape are they? Are they big puffy clouds or are they like thin kind of wispy clouds? Um, we can draw that in our book. Uh, what color is the sky? Is it bright blue? Is it a darker blue? If it's cloudy, it might be gray. Um, if you go outside at night, it might be sort of like an orange or different um, pink kind of colors. When I went outside to do my observations, it was around 3.30 in the afternoon on a very sunny day. I noticed that the sun was a very bright yellow. It was almost white. Um, There's only a few clouds in the sky, and they were pretty puffy, and the sky was all one color of blue. It was very pale blue, and the sun wasn't as high as it would be if you went outside at, like, noon. Um, so those were just a few things that I noticed. Um, I hope that once you go outside and make your observations, you would maybe snap a picture and share it with us. Once you're done drawing what you can see in the sky, we would love for you to share a picture to our Facebook page. Um, feel free to just snap a photo of what you took, um, let us know where you're from, what your sky looks like, and we would love to see the work that you've done. So until we meet again, feel free to try to go outside at different times during the day to just see if you can notice any differences. So if today you went outside during the middle of the afternoon, maybe another time this week you can try going out right after breakfast or closer to bedtime and just see how the sky looks different. Before you go outside, feel free to try to make a prediction or a guess for what the sky will look like. Then check your predictions, see if you were right. If you were right, let us know what was right. Or if you maybe weren't quite so right, let us know what was different. Scientists make predictions all the time, and sometimes they're wrong, and that's okay. That's how they learn. So now that we're wrapping up, feel free to share with someone else in your house. It could be another person in your house, or even like a pet, or maybe a stuffed animal if that's what you want. Uh, share something that you learned today uh, by observing the sun and the sky. We really hope that you enjoyed today and will join us again next week while we learn about one of the most important tools scientists have in helping them observe outer space. Thank you. Bye girls, we'll see you again next week.